the contest of 2020 will go into the history books as the first ever Eurovision Song Contest that got cancelled. However, with Eurovision Europe Shine a Light and other alternative Eurovision shows, the contest showed its resilience. We met with the executive producer of the Eurovision Song Contest 2020, Sietse Bakker, to look back at the past two months, starting with the week of the cancellation. We were informed in advance that the decision was probably going to be taken, that the Eurovision Song Contest 2020 was going to be cancelled. So we were prepared. Um, but it was a tough day because we had to inform, first of all, our team that uh, the contest was not going to take place. And uh, that was a, a tough message to bring across to people that worked on it for so many months, especially since due to the social distancing measures that were already in place, people were largely working from home. So we had to bring across the bad news through a video message. The team in the Netherlands was fully prepared to host the Eurovision Song Contest 2020. In fact, we visited the back then busy offices in Hilversum just before the heads of delegation meeting early in March. Every day I realize it's, it's a unique project. I think it's once in a lifetime, so I think we should enjoy every moment of this uh, unique uh, project. I think it has been hard on, on everyone, um, but it's also been sort of a, a juggle between, on one hand, the realization that the world is in a pretty rough place and that our drama is relatively small compared to what's going on in the rest of the world. Uh, nevertheless, everyone put their hearts and soul into it, worked really hard and it's, uh, it's, it's been really sad. So the ability to continue and to know that we're going to do a Eurovision Song Contest in 2021, uh, that gave a lot of people good energy. Uh, to do Europe Shine a Light gave people a lot of good energy. We very quickly shifted gear from sadness to just being positive about the future. Eurovision Europe Shine a Light came together in only seven weeks. The preparations started mid-March and went live on the 16th of May. The idea to do it was already there, I think, after two days. Uh, we started working on it. Uh, we had to bring on board with the EBU all those broadcasters. And we were very happy that so many of them, including the 41 participating broadcasters to the 2020 contest, decided to show it on TV. Uh, it was tough to produce it because our own team had to work largely from home. People couldn't as easily produce TV as usual. You couldn't as easily you know, go outside and do things or do things with, with big acts. So we had to find a big studio uh, where we can produce TV. And, Luckily, we had that studio right here behind the building, Studio 21, which was perfectly suitable for an event like this. But to do a production like this from scratch within seven weeks uh, with a relatively small team and with all the restrictions that are in place, not only here but across Europe, has been, uh, has been quite a challenge. But in the end, we're very happy with the result and we, we just hope that the fans and especially the artists really enjoyed it. We are the heroes of our time, heroes, oh, oh. But we When we started the process, we had two challenges. One, we didn't know what Europe was going to look like on the 16th of May, what the situation would be. Would it get better? Would it get worse? And we also didn't know what the situation was going to be like from country to country. Some countries were hit very hard by the coronavirus and the measures to contain it. Uh, other countries were hit as well, but not as hard as, for example, Italy or Spain. And we had to find a tone of voice that would be suitable for all countries that would broadcast it. And that was a, that was a major concern when, uh, when, when making it also because you have to start producing content for a show that takes place at a moment in time that you and you don't know what that moment is going to look like. There were a lot of highlights. What we really enjoyed producing was obviously the performance of Love Shine Light together with the participants of 2020 and fortunately Katrina and her dog at the end. We also really enjoyed creating the, uh, the landmark uh, item where we asked broadcasters to light up famous landmarks in their countries and have the Rotterdam Philharmonic play a beautiful performance of Love Shine Light all from home 
which is, I think, truly remarkable, because that item really gave us a sense of European togetherness for the first time in this crisis, for the first time since the cancellation of the song contest, to really have that idea of we're all in this together uh, for, for better and for worse. During the show, it was announced that the Eurovision Song Contest in 2021 will take place in Rotterdam. When was this decided? Actually, only a few days before. Uh, fortunately, Rotterdam confirmed uh, very early on that they were eager to host it again. They also made available the financial resources to do so. They made available Ahoy as a venue for, uh, for just under, I think, seven weeks. But we had to, a lot of homework to do ourselves as well, to figure out whether the team would be available, whether we could get the budget together again, whether our suppliers would be available to, to work with us. And I think most importantly, to think of ways to make the Eurovision Song Contest 2021 happen, no matter the circumstances. And that is a challenge that we haven't solved fully yet, and we're going to work on that uh, with the EBU in the next few weeks and months. A lot of the work behind the scenes, putting together a team, finding a host city, uh, finding the best suppliers, uh, building a stage, a theme, branding, that's all been done. And what we're going to do in the next weeks and months is to think of what, which of these elements are we going to take with us to 2021 and which ones we're going to rethink, not only because we would like to surprise the audience, but also because we want to make a Eurovision Song Contest next year that fits within that sort of spirit of time. We don't know exactly what, what Europe and the world will look like in a year from now, uh, but we want, to, uh, we want to make a show that, that fits in May 2021, uh, regardless of the circumstances. We want to make it happen. Whether we will use Open Up as a slogan for next year as well is yet to be decided, but it feels very relevant, uh, especially in these times. But um, I'm actually curious what, what, what you think uh, from home. Maybe you can let us know in the comments. Should we keep Open Up or should we come up with something different? The last few months showed us that it's very difficult to predict the future. Who could know that we would end up in this situation just half a year ago? Uh, it's also hard to predict what the future will be like. Um, but I am optimistic. Our team is optimistic. We're going to work the next few weeks and months together with the EBU, together with Rotterdam to build scenarios and to make sure that next year there will be a Eurovision Song Contest in May. What that will look like is almost impossible to say. But I can say this, the heart of the Eurovision Song Contest are the artists, are the fans, the interaction between them. And whatever the situation is like next year, we will have to find a way to make that interaction happen um, and hopefully we will be able to get everyone to Rotterdam to make the Eurovision Song Contest better than ever and, uh, and to celebrate stronger than ever. In every corner of our heart.